This is Piazzale Michelangelo. Is it in any city you go, you want to find the perfect vantage point, the place where you can survey your surroundings and snap that perfect photo. In Taipei, I climbed up Elephant Mountain to get the perfect view of the city in Taipei 101. In Chicago, up the Sears Tower, what they call Willis Tower now, to get the view of the city, and in Istanbul, up to the old town, the Galata Tower, to get the view of the river below and the millions of mosques. There are other places too, the rooftop bars in Saigon or the Rex Hotel to get the view of the piazza down below and the government buildings in Paris, but what about here in Florence? We gotta go find out. All my viewers, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do hit that notification bell down below so you'll get notified anytime there is new content on this channel. Now, when did I first come here up to this hill here? I came with a French friend a long time ago. We bought a bottle of wine down that way, some pistachios, climbed up to the top of the hill. This is San Miniato Hill, and up there there's a church. We sat at that church and drank the bottle of wine until, well, until the wine was finished and until the sun went down. I brought my mother here to Florence. My sister and her husband visited. At one point I came here for the World Cycling Championships and then I traveled across Italy, moved from up in the north down here to Florence and settled here. Anytime I have friends or family or anybody who comes and visits me, I bring them up here to that hill. This is Piazzale Michelangelo and it is special. Of course, it's the view that makes it special. Over there you have the church where my French friend and I sat drinking wine until the sun went down. Out that way you have Fiesole, the historic little town on the hilltop with its Roman theater. And of course the showstopper, the view of the river, the bridges, the old bridges down below, and the Brunelleschi Duomo that's capping this Renaissance town. About a few hours before sunset you see tourists making their way up the hill with bottles and pizza boxes in their hands. And, and don't worry if you get up here without it there are bars there are little kiosks that sell drinks and it's a great vibe up here and the coolest bar of all is this neoclassical style bar called La Loja and it's positioned up there you can get a drink have a bite to eat and enjoy the sunset now some of the best views are here to be had on the stairs and it gets packed with Florence lovers listening to music because usually there's a musician who sets up down below play some songs and every now and then you see a marriage proposal now don't worry when the sun goes down the party's not over because people make their way down the hill to the neighborhood of San Nicolo there you can find restaurants and bars get yourself an aperitivo you can thumb through the photos on the phone and post the best ones to social media <laughs> from Amazon. This is a new eight terabyte hard drive that has the disc in there. It's gonna go in my big PC. I already have an eight terabyte in there. I have solid state drives in there. I have another solid state drive in there that I run Premiere Pro on. I have the cache going right to a dedicated solid state drive, but this is gonna be backing up the other eight terabyte hard drive because I am making a lot of videos, there's a lot of data, a lot of MP4 files, you need a good HHD, a hard drive. This is from Seagate. I'll put a link to that down below so you can have a look. Another ball head. This one is from the cool Italian company. They make 
quality products. Memfrotto, check them out. This is the famous 492. It pivots, it swivels, and when you lock it, you know it's locked, so you're not gonna lose your camera anywhere you go. Now, I had another ball head come in last week. This one here from Ulansi. I'm gonna try out this. I'm gonna try out the Memfrotto. I'm gonna see what works best. Uh, and an update on that scale I bought last week, it is completely the wrong scale. I can't even return it. It came from like a two week order from Shenzhen in China. It would cost me, and this Amazon one, I have to pay to ship it back. It cost me like 30 euro to ship the thing back. It's only worth, it's a cheap, cheap scale. Don't buy that scale. I don't know what I'm gonna do. If anybody has any suggestions for a nice quality digital scale to measure out my espresso, Give me some ideas, drop some comments down below. I look forward to reading those. Here it is, this is a cool tripod. It is from Moman. The Moman tripod, this thing, you're supposed to be able to step on it, do anything, you're not gonna smash it. You can turn this anodized red ring here, lock out different positions. You're gonna screw your ball head on that. You have a nice camera support. I'm gonna mount my Canon G7X Mark III on this because right now I'm using a cheap, cheap tripod. The cool thing about this tripod, it has quarter inch holes all the way around it. You can mount microphone receivers, transmitters here. It gives you those options. It also comes with some straps so you can strap it to anything you want so you know your camera's not gonna fall off if you have it in a kind of a dangerous position. Florence is old. I started a deep dive and got some Renaissance information. Back in the 1500s, Florence pushed out the Medici family and became back again a Florentine Republic. And it stayed that way, but the Medicis wanted it back. And in fact, the Pope, who was himself a Medici, sent in the Vatican army to attack Florence and take it back and put his Medici family back in charge. It started a one year battle, the siege of Florence. And this is where that hill that later became Piazzale Michelangelo comes back into the picture. Florence enlisted Michelangelo Buonarroti. Yes, Michelangelo. It enlisted him to help fortify the city, help design walls that would protect the city and protect that church, the Miniato church up there on the hill. The battle went on for nearly one year and it got so bad Michelangelo brought in mattresses to help protect that bell tower. They put Michelangelo in a bind because he's from Florence, this is his home city, and he was enlisted to protect it, but at the same time, he had been doing a lot of artwork for the Medici family. They were paying him. Well, anyway, the Medici family eventually won. I read about it all in this book here, The Secrets of Florence. It's a good book. Further on, back when Florence was part of this republic. Florence once had this short-lived kingdom, the kingdom of Utria, and it was the area that is basically now modern-day Tuscany, and they don't talk about this much. That's probably because no one really remembers it, because Napoleon moved in in 1808. Napoleon from France, and this area became part of France. You still had the kingdom of Italy, the kingdom of Sicily, but in 1808, he came in, divided this thing up, the kingdom, into three different departments, those French departments. This was the Arno department, named after the River Arno. But let's get back to that hillside and that fabulous view. Now, it wasn't that long ago, Italy was unified, thanks to Garibaldi, mid-1800s. And in that time, after Turin, Florence became the capital of Italy, and it's now down there in Rome. Florence is the capital for around six to seven years and it had to look the part. So this renascimento, this rebirth, that meant out with the old and in with the new. They cleaned up the city, they widened the boulevards, they tore down some of the old neighborhoods and built these big piazzas, and they built that big road leading up to Piazzale Michelangelo. They built La Loggia, all that area up there that now supports what is the best view of Florence. Where is your best view? What area do you go to in your city? Or when you're visiting a famous city, tell me what is the best view. Drop some comments down below, but you know the place to come and visit in Florence.